Hello everyone, this is Brad Wistens. This mission is going to be my submission for a challenge that was put together by another KSP YouTuber, Stratson Blitz, which is to make a plane that flies not off of fuel, but on ore. Since planes don't actually fly off of ore, I'm going to be converting the ore into liquid fuel and oxidizer using an ISRU module as I fly. Rather unrealistically, Kerbal Space Program has a one-to-one -one ore conversion rate which means that if I convert 10 kilograms of ore, I end up with 10 kilograms of liquid fuel or oxidizer if that's what I'm converting it to. However, this doesn't mean that I'm maintaining the same effective specific impulse because the ore converters don't just need ore to run, they also need electrical power. In order to maintain the integrity of this being an ore powered plane, I'm gonna be generating this electricity using fuel cells that run off of liquid fuel and oxidizer. This means that some of the output of the ISRU module is going directly into the fuel cell to keep this process running. Taking into account the efficiency of the fuel cell, I end up with a effective ore conversion rate of 92.5%. The orbital maneuvers in this mission are going to be done using the LVN engines because those have the highest specific impulse in Kerbal Space Program of any liquid fuel engine at 800 seconds. Using this 92.5% efficiency, I was at first counting on an effective specific impulse of 740 seconds. However, it was pointed out to me that I was neglecting to factor in the small electrical output of the LVN engines that they have while burning. Once I factored this back in, it, I ended up with a final effective specific impulse of 748 seconds. The high efficiency of ISRU might make ore planes sound pretty easy at this point. Where the challenge comes in is the high dry mass of the ISRU modules on top of the fuel cells needed to make this run. This plane has four rapier engines, which are two tons each, so I have eight tons of engine. In order to run these, I need six ISRU modules, which are four and a quarter tons each and then 12 fuel cell arrays, which are 240 kilograms each. Adding this all up, I need 28.4 tons of ISRU module and fuel cell to go with my eight tons of engine. To make things even more challenging, this is all dry mass, which is not gonna be burned away as I decrease fuel. This extra mass is really what makes an ore plane difficult to fly with. And this is why it was really important here to maximize the takeoff mass per rapier engine. Luckily, I had just gotten some experience doing this with my recent mission, which I'll link in the comments, where I made a single stage space plane that went to Laith and Tylo and back without refueling. As with that mission, I'm using a ratio of 48 tons of takeoff mass per rapier engine. I'm also gonna be using some very similar techniques for the takeoff run as well as the landings in this mission. What we've seen so far in the video is that I've used a little bit of my ore to taxi the plane to the top of the hills to the west of the Kerbal Space Center. This is gonna give me some more room to pick up speed for the takeoff run, as well as a downhill at the beginning of the run to pick up speed. This is key because it's getting off the ground that really enforces that limit right now of 48 tons per rapier. Taking off from the runway, that maximum is going to be lower. There are probably some other places around Kerbin where you might be able to push this ratio higher. Certainly at the polar ice caps, you could take off with a lot more tons per rapier engine. But then there's other problems like you wouldn't be able to benefit from the rotational speed of Kerbin, and you'd have to worry about how to actually get there. With that said, Looking for alternative takeoff techniques to allow me to push this ratio higher is certainly a project I intend to look at. Once I get off the ground, I'm gonna be staying at sea level before I pick up speed. I do have a little bit more wing area per plane mass in this mission compared to what I had with the Lathe Tylo mission. And lowering this would probably be able to improve the efficiency of this mission, but this certainly made the plane fly a lot better. There is a little bit of angle of attack on these wings. It's only about two degrees, so until I'm going really fast, I am gonna be having to pitch up a little bit to maintain level flight. At around 400 meters per second, I'm gonna to begin to start slowly climbing. 
I'm trying to keep the nose of this plane pretty close to prograde for the sake of efficiency and let that small angle of attack do as much as possible of the actual lifting. While I'm running all the engines in this plane off of the oar, the efficiency advantage of the air breathing engines is still there and it's still absolutely critical that I do as much of the ascent as possible with this phase. Reaching as high of a speed as possible with the air breathing engines on Kerbin is always tricky because at the altitude we're looking at, around 15 to 20 kilometers, the speed of sound is increasing the higher up we go. However, our thrust available relative to Mach speed is decreasing as we go to higher altitude. So it's always a difficult balancing act in finding the right altitude to try to reach the highest speed possible with. There's also a slight advantage to being higher because once I fire up the LVNs, the higher we are, the more efficient they're going to be running and the more thrust I'm going to be getting out of them. I was able to reach just under 1700 meters per second at around 19 kilometers this run. At this point, I'm firing up the LVN engines. The rapier engines are going to stay on and help a little bit until they completely flame out, but I'm not going to be using any of their closed cycle mode. The four LVN engines are going to be doing the rest of the ascent. The LVN engines are going to take a while to get us to space, so this is a good time to talk about another challenge with ore planes, which is heat. We're generating heat not only from pushing through the atmosphere, but also from running the six ISRU modules. Once the ISRU modules heat up too much, they lose almost all of their throughput and we wouldn't be able to fly anymore. To counteract this heat, I am running eight large radiator panels on this design. That adds 400 kilograms to our dry mass, and it also uses a tiny bit of electrical power. This does technically factor into the effective specific impulse from the LVN engines that I mentioned earlier, which is 748 seconds. It is, however, an extremely small amount, less than one-tenth of a second of specific impulse. As we near orbital speed, centripetal acceleration is doing a lot to help us fly, and we're flying better and better right as before we reach space, and we end up in orbit of Kerbin with just over 5,300 meters per second of delta V remaining. As we get closer to orbital speed, centripetal acceleration is doing a lot to help us fly, and we eventually reach full orbit of Kerbin with a little over 5,300 meters per second of delta V remaining. This high amount of margin was slightly irritating. I was hoping this would be a shorter mission, but over 5,000 meters per second demands that we do something interesting. My favorite destination recently has been Lathe, and because this took a lot of cues from the previous mission to Lathe and Tylo I had done, I knew this could land on Lathe, so that's going to be our first destination. As with the previous mission, I'm going to be doing a gravity assist to get to Joule, which is the planet that Lathe orbits. I'm going to be doing an assist off of the moon to help me eject from the Kerbin system, and then I'm going to be doing assists that alternate between Eve and Kerbin, to spin up my orbit fast enough to allow me to reach Joule. Once I've reached Joule, I'm going to do assists that are going to alternate between Tylo and Lathe to slow down my orbit slow enough such that I'm able to finally capture in orbit of Lathe just using aero braking without having to use any retro burning to slow down. Even after burning off all that ore, the ratio we have of mass to wing area is still quite low, and Lathe really exacerbates that due to its thin atmosphere at the altitude we're trying to land at, which is around five kilometers on the mountaintop that I've targeted for the landing. Landing at a lower elevation would make this a lot easier, and we do have the margin to do it, but I knew from previous experience that this should be possible and really challenging landings on late. They're always a lot of fun to do. Always takes more than a couple tries, but very satisfying when you finally pull it off. The first challenge is slowing down at the right point. So we're coming in to our landing zone at the right speed, at the right altitude. The wing design on this proved to not be able to tolerate too high of a g-force, 
which made getting this right during the early part of this descent really critical. The gliding dynamics of this proved to be quite unexpectedly tricky. I knew it would be stable on the pitch axis, but I had a lot of trouble on the yaw axis, and I had to be very careful with my inputs before I had a runaway effect that would put me into a flat spin. This really increased the level of difficulty on this landing past what I expected. I don't think there's more about this landing that really requires an explanation for me, so I'm going to shut up for a second and let you watch and enjoy. We've landed on our first destination lathe, and we have a lot of ore left. In fact, more than half of the ore that we started with. And because crafts will get lighter as you drain the fuel, the second half of your fuel always goes further than the first half. We have 4,366 meters per second left, which is enough to go to plenty other destinations, so let's get this thing back to space. The location I have for my takeoff run here is the same as I had in my previous video. And a lot of this takeoff and ascent is going to be similar to that video. However, honestly, the degree of difficulty here is a lot lower. Because burning ore is so much less efficient than burning ion fuel, I've burned a lot more fuel to get here, so my mass per rapier is quite a bit lower. I also started off with a higher ratio of wing area per takeoff mass. For both of these reasons, it's a lot easier for me to get off the ground and to not slam into the terrain after taking off. As a result, I really tried to focus on efficiency during this ascent. I'm going to start off by keeping this right above sea level for as long as possible. I do eventually have to gain a little bit of altitude to not slam into the next island that we come across. From there, I'm slowly going to climb to an altitude of 22 kilometers, which is the magic altitude on lathe for maximizing the speed we reach with the air breathing engines. If you look at the curve which represents the speed of sound on lathe as a function of altitude, there's a very prominent local maximum at 22 kilometers. Air breathing engines in Kerbal Space Program have a curve that gives you thrust as a function of your Mach speed. The higher the speed of sound, the higher speed we can reach on the air breathing engines and still have usable thrust. The speed of sound lets me reach 1760 meters per second on lathe before I have to turn the LVN engines on. This is significantly more than I was able to reach on Kerbin. The lower mass we have from burning fuel to get here is a small factor, but the biggest factor here is the difference in speed of sound. The speed of sound lets me reach 1760 meters per second before I have to turn on the LVN engines. This is significantly more than I reached on Kerbin. There are some other factors like gravity and my lower mass at this point in the mission, but it's really speed of sound that's informing most of this difference. As with the ascent on Kerbin, after turning on the LVN engines, I'm going to let the rapier engine slowly flame out. I am turning them off at that point. I'm not going to be using them on closed cycle mode. And the LVN engines are getting us the rest of the way to space. If you've flown around Lathe before, you'll have noticed that the higher altitudes on Lathe are great for reaching really high speeds with wing-assisted flight. But heating is a huge problem when we get there. And it's even more of a problem in this mission because we're trying to keep those ISRU modules at the right heat so we can get their full throughput. This really became a problem here, and you're going to notice on the rest of this lathe ascent that I'm having to do a lot of throttling back so I don't run out of output from these modules. One danger to bear in mind here is that on one hand it's okay to run out of liquid fuel and oxidizer. We only have one small dumpling tank to handle the fuel that's coming directly out of the converter, 
and if that bottoms out, the engines will just automatically throttle down to match the output from the converter. However, if we also run out of electricity, everything's going to shut down and we'll actually have no fuel or electrical power and there's no good way to get that started again. So I had to be really careful to make sure I was manually throttling down to avoid this. We're getting close to space and all that's going to be left to do here is to finish circularizing our orbit once we are at apoapsis. We have a lot of ore left over which is going to be good for 3,461 meters per second of delta V from lathe orbit. I feel like this is a good spot to end this video here, so I'm going to take suggestions in the comments for where you want me to take this mission in part two. Until then, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.